All right, so I'm Brady Jolly. This is the This One Time Podcast, and I'm with Drew Harden with Metro down in Chattanooga. So, Drew, uh, thanks for being here, man. Super psyched to have you. Dude, thank you for having me. I appreciate uh, the opportunity to come up here to be on the podcast and to see that such an incredible shot that you guys have built. It's awesome, man. Yeah, thanks. So um, why don't you first just start by telling us about yourself, about your company, what you guys get into down there. Absolutely. So uh, I'm fortunate enough to lead Metro Plumbing, Heating, and Air. We're a plumbing, heating, and air company in Chattanooga, Tennessee, I think one of the most beautiful cities in the country. Uh, it's where I called home. I've lived all over the place, but came back and kind of took over a uh, family business along with my sister and have grown it into what it is today. And uh, we're keeping it going, man. We have a team of 107 people, I think, as of this week who are pushing really, really hard towards a goal and all kinds of incredible stories have come out of that. And so we were just blessed to be a part of the, the thing. We feel fortunate because not everything um, for a lot of people comes together. And so my sister and I are very grateful, one, for the opportunity, um, but then two, just to be a part of the magic ride. Like you've been in business long enough. You've seen people who they, they, they get that magic and they get that boost. And then other people who grind away for 20 or 30 years before something breaks. And so we feel super fortunate uh, to be young and to have this type of success. So you're an animal, man. I've loved this morning <laughs> oh, hanging dude. out with you. Like I've already been, like, that. writing notes. You know, you've already given me some tidbits. I love what you guys have going. Tell me um, why you love the trades. Before we get into the story, I just want to know why you love the trades and why you like why you've made a career out of it. Why I love the trades. That's a great question. I think it's accessible success if you work really hard. I think the trades represent two things. Um, one, they provide something that we desperately need. Health, comfort, and safety is something that will never go out of style. So just from, from the onset, right, you have health, comfort, and safety. This is like monumental to, to being a first world country, an industrialized country, and so that's just cool. I mean, like I'll never fall out of love with that portion of it. Uh, but for the business side of it, it's – I don't know of another industry – that can change people's lives from a technical pursuit. Like there's very few jobs that you can come into and create true life-changing income in rather short order if you apply yourself. And so I think we've plumbing and heating and air and electrical create this even field where success is, it's, it's not possible, it's probable. Like the only difference between success in the trades and failure in the trades is truthfully the personal mindset and how they're applying themselves. Um, so do that. If you can't get jacked up about that, then yep. <laughs> pulse check. Couldn't agree more, man. I think that's a really good transition. You know, this podcast is where we tell stories about the trades. So I think that's a good transition. Like let's hop into it. I know you have a good story you want to share with us. Absolutely. So this story's not mine. Um, so it's important that, that, that I shout out Matt. So he is our HVAC install manager at the moment. Uh, but he used to be in HVAC cells. So he's one of the rare guys who have just, he's mastered a couple of parts of the trade. Tr truly like one of those people you meet and you're like, dude, if I had like five more of him, I'm pretty sure we could conquer a country <laughs> or just like take over Europe. Like he's just, he oozes charisma and, and talent. And then on top of that is a disciplined person. So then you're just like, okay, I just want to be around you more. And so he's that type of person, has a lot of magnetism. So he's done a couple things really well. So... To set the story up, he's in HVAC cells, get a tech generated flip, right? You know, we got a tech who's gonna come out uh, to the job to do a home care club tune up. So this is one of our home care club customers and sales guy, he flips it to uh, his sales guy and Matt comes out. And when he comes to the house, uh, the tech didn't do a great job of setting him up and all the information. So a lot of the things that he shows up for are new to him like it's not information here right. and new and so just imagine he walks into the house walks into the living room it was kind of odd the door was just kind of like it would be like he like the, you could hear like a voice like hey just come on in and he comes into the um living room and there's a hospital bed and there's a, a guy in his late 30s early 40s uh who's you know the 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 husband of the wife who placed the service call they have a couple kids he's in a hospital bed in, in the living room Matt, who has never been a stranger, and I would say if he would have been paid hourly, would have maybe made more money than as a salesperson because he, he was more interested in the person, far more. So he gets into the conversation with the guy. 
And he starts asking, you know, hey, how long have you guys been here? How, how long are you going to be here? Asking questions that I think a lot of times are, you know, I get frustrated having to ask. I ask him 10 times a day sometimes and, you know, you, you grow weary. And so Matt asks his questions and goes through his whole process. And along the process, he finds out that the guy has terminal uh, cancer. Wow. And so we're the third company to, to go out. We're the most expensive. Um, and just throughout the process, they build kind of a relationship. And so Matt uh, leaves the guy, and, and he doesn't close it. And so Matt's disappointed. He's like, man, I thought, I thought we had a real connection, you know, all this other thing. And so a couple of days pass by. He's following up. Inside Sales is following up. So you have a process to, to capture the sure. call. And Matt uh, texts this guy at night just checking in on him like, hey, how you doing? You know, how's – you know, the battle going kind of thing. And the dude texted him back and he said, hey, we want to go through with the work. Like oh. we just, hey, oh, dude, awesome. We, we get a lead. We desperately needed the install, so it's a win, win, win. And Matt goes back out there to do the financing and the guy starts talking. And he's like, he's like, man, I just, I just want you to know uh, that when your company, and <laughs> he was like, when your company, took concern for how I live in the home and how my family is going to use it after I'm gone. He was like, dude, I feel, I feel like you've helped me die well. Wow. And I still get choked up about it because I think sometimes as tradespeople, uh, we take for granted the impact that you have because you're meeting people at some of their worst moments. Yeah. You're in their environment. You're inside their house, the domain that they live in, that they make decisions in, that they counsel in, that they struggle in. And just by taking your time and doing your job well, having true concern, lowering your ego, getting out of the way, not making decisions for the customer, all the things that we talk about, but I think it becomes so routine that we avoid the true power of it all which is, dude, are you so dialed into what you're doing today that, and courageous enough to do what you need to do today in order to make a decision or a disciplined decision that has impact that you will never realize. You'll never feel, you'll never be excited by it, you'll never have it, but you'll leave knowing that there was a lasting, there's a daughter and a son in that story who are impacted because that sales guy took the time to run the process as it is, to listen, truly listen. And this, this particular uh, guy, Matt, you know, you asked a question a couple weeks ago. It's like, do you have the courage to make a decision today that the, the outcome will not be realized for another 100 years? Hmm. Because when you walk into a customer's house, when you go into their environment, you are dealing with people who you have no freaking clue the decisions that they have to make later that day and how your emotions, your attitude, your dialect, your smell, your look, how your van looks parked outside has lasting impact. Someone may have lost their job because you didn't do your job as a technician inside their house because you pissed them off and then they lost control of their anger later and they said something to their boss that they regret because of how you ran the service call because how the call center didn't pick up the call. Or how we were flippant when we answered the phone. And we were just feeling a little lazy that day. And, dude, I do it. And when I talk, when I talk like this, I'm talking to me. Yeah. How many times as an owner I've showed up to my office and I want to just mail it in because I'm tired. Or because my kids had me up all last night. How many times do I get that customer complaint and I'm like, this customer is just being a jerk. When truthfully, there's a real human being behind that customer. And so I think for me, all of the stories in that story exemplifies part of the deep love that we have for the trades that our next star and companies like this have because I genuinely I couldn't imagine a more impactful way to do business I love it man that's so cool